other inventions. Firearms, firearms identification is a discipline concerned with the internal measure of particular weapon. We can have handguns, which can be single shot pistols fired by one round at a time, or revolvers firing, uh, featuring firing chambers with in a revolver cylinder. Examples could be swing out, break top, solid free revolvers. There are also semi automatic pistols, which feature a magazine. Here's just an example a revolver with a swing out, swing out revolver. And here is a semi automatic pistol. There are also long guns that may be single shot, repeating, semi automatic, or automatic. We have shotguns, which have shotgun ammunition called shells, contain named numerous ball shaped projectiles called slugs, narrowing of the smooth barrel, the choke of the smooth shotgun can concentrate the shot when fired. Rifles feature a barrel that with lands and groups, bullet ammunition is impressed with lands and groups during firing. On screen is an example of a bullet action long gun using a movement of a bullet mechanism to expel the spent cartridge case, load the next round, and cock the hammer. A semi-automatic long gun uses the energy from the firing reaction to expel the spent cartridge case load the next round, and cock the hammer. Gun barrel markings. The inner surface of the barrel of a gun leaves its markings on a barrel passing through it. These markings are unique to each gun. The gun barrel is produced from solid bar of steel that has been hollowed out by drilling. The microscopic drill marks left on the barrel's inner surface are randomly irregular and serve to impart a uniqueness to each barrel. The manufacturer of a barrel also requires impressing, impressing its inner surface with spiral grooves, a step known as rifling. Rifling is usually accomplished by cutting all grooves in one pass with a cutter known as a brooch, or pressing all the grooves at once onto the barrel with a tool known as a button, or humming, hummer forging the barrel using a mandrel containing the reverse image of the rifle, of the rifling. The surfaces of the original or remaining between the grooves are called lands. The grooves serve to guide the fire, fired bullet through the barrel, imparting a rapid spin to ensure accuracy. The diameter of the gun barrel measured between opposite lands is known as caliber. Once a manufacturer chooses a rifling process, the class characteristics of the weapons barrel will remain consistent. Each will have the same number of lands and grooves with the same approximate width and direction of a twist. Here we see an example of a barrel with presence of lands and grooves in between. Now we have the striations. Striations are fine lines found in the interior of the barrel. These striations form the individual characteristics of the barrel. It is the inner surface of the barrel of a gun that leaves its striation markings on a bullet passing through it. Here we have an example of a bullet impressed with the rifling markings of the barrel when it emerges from the weapon. Photomicrograph of two bullets through a comparison microscope. The test bullet is on the right and the question bullet is on the left, helping to compare striation, groove, and other markings. Bullet examination. No two rifled bullets will have identical striation markings the, or two rifled barrels. The number of lands and grooves and their direction of twist are obvious points of comparison during the initial stages of an examination between an evidence bullet and a test-fired bullet. Here we have an example of a comparison microscope and the bolt that it holds for its objective lens. Any differences in these class characteristics immediately serve to eliminate the possibility that both bullets traveled through the same barrel. Individualization, uh, a goal of in all areas criminalistic, frequently become an attainable reality in firearm examination by examining the striation of a bullet. Shotguns. Unlike rifled firearms, 
A shotgun has a smooth barrel. Shotguns generally fire small lead balls or pellets that are not impressed with any characteristic markings that can be related back to the weapon. The diameter of the shotgun barrel is expressed by the term gauge. The higher the gauge number, the smaller the barrel's diameter. Firing a weapon. Pulling the trigger releases the weapon's firing pin, causing it to strike the primer, which in turn ignites the powder. The expanding gases generated by the burning gunpowder propel the bullet toward through the barrel, simultaneously pushing the spent cartridge case or shell back with equal force against the breech face. Firing a weapon, the shell is impressed with a marking, is impressed with markings by its contact with the metal surface of the weapon firing and loading mechanism. Cartridge case comparison. The firing pin, breech face, and ejector and extractor mechanism also offer a highly distinctive signature for individualization of cartridge cases. The shape of the firing pin will be impressed into the relatively soft metal of the primer of the cartridge case. The cartridge case in its re-award thrust is impressed with the surface markings of the breech face. Computer imaging, computerized imaging technology makes it possible to store a bullet and cartridge surface characteristics in a manner analogous to automated fingerprint files. The National Integrated Ballistics Information Network, NIBIN, produces database files from bullets and cartridge casings retrieved from crime scenes and test fires from retrieved firearms, often linking a specific weapon to multiple crimes. The ultimate decision for marking a final comparison between will be determined by the forensic examiner through traditional microscopic methods. Distance determination. When a firearm is discharged, unburned or partially burned particles of gunpowder, in addition to smoke, air are propelled out of the barrel along with the bullet toward the target. If the muzzle of the weapon is sufficiently close, these products will be deposited onto the target. The distribution of gunpowder particles and other discharge residues around a bullet hole permits an assessment of the distance from which a gunpowder or rifle was fired. The precise distance of which a handgun or rifle has been fired is determined by carefully comparing the powder residue pattern located on the victim's clothing or skin against the test patterns made when the suspect weapon is fired at a varying distance from a target. By comparing the test and evidence patterns, the examiner may find enough similarity in shape and density upon which it's based uh, to base an opinion as to the distance from which the shot was fired. Distance determination without a suspect weapon. In cases where the weapon is held in contact with or less than one inch, from the target, a star-shaped stellate tear pattern around the bullet hole entrance surrounded by a rim of smokeless deposit of vaporous lead is usually present. A halo of vaporous lead smoke deposited around a bullet hole is normally indicative of a discharge of 12 to 18 inches, a foot to a foot and a half, about one-third of a meter. The presence of scattered pecks of unburned and partially burned powdered grains. Partially burned powdered grains without any accompanying soot is often observed at distances of up to 25 inches and occasionally up to 36 inches, three feet, about one yard or one meter. A weapon fired more than three feet, more than a meter from a surface or individual will usually not deposit any powder residues and the only visible indication is a dark ring around the hole known as a bullet wipe. Here we have an example of test powder patterns made from a 38 caliber special Smith & Wesson revolver fired at the following distances from the target. Here is at the point of contact. Here is an example of being fired from six inches away. Here we have 12 inches of distance. Here is a foot and a half, 18 inches. And here we have the contact shot, looking like a star. And when necessary, a shirt bearing a powder stain photographed under normal light on the left can be enhanced by infrared light 
to help see or distinguish the gunshot residue. Gunpowder residue, distance determination involving shotguns must again be related to the suspect weapon and ammunition. In the absence of a weapon, muzzle to target distance can be estimated by measuring the spread of the discharge shot as a short distance as the shot distance increases, the pellets progressively separate and spread out. When garments or other evidence relevant to a shooting are received in the crime laboratory, the distance of all items are first examined microscopically for the presence of gunpowder residue. Chemical tests such as the grease test may be needed to determine gunpowder residues that are not visible. Primer residue on hands. Firing a weapon propels residues toward the target and blows gunpowder and primer residues back toward the shooter. As a result, traces of these residues are often deposited on the firing hand of the shooter, and their detection can provide valuable information as to whether or not an individual has recently fired a weapon. Examiners measure the amount of barium and antimony on the relevant portions of the suspect's hands such as the thumb, the back of the hand, and the palm. Scientists may also characterize the morphology of particles containing these elements to determine whether or not a person has fired, handled a weapon, or was near a discharged firearm. Here we have examples of adhesives used to sample a suspect shooter's hands to remove those ad adhesives or to remove those residues for later analysis. Serial numbers. Increasingly, the criminalist is required to restore a serial number when it has been removed or obliterated by grinding, rifling, and punching. Restoring serial numbers is possible through chemical etching because the metal crystals is in the stamped zone are placed under a permanent strain that extends a short distance beneath the original numbers. Firearm evidence collection. Firearms are collected by holding the weapon by the edge of the trigger guard or by the checkered portion of the grip. Before being sent to the laboratory, all precautions must be taken to prevent accidental discharge of a loaded weapon. In most cases, it will be necessary to unload the weapon. When a revolver is recovered, the chambers their positions and corresponding cartridges must be recorded. Firearm evidence must be marked for identification, usually a tag on the trigger guard, and a chain of custody must be established. Bullets, cartridges, cases, and shotgun shells recovered at the crime scene must be packaged in a properly labeled evidence container. Take care to avoid obliterating striation markings that may be present on the bullet. Protect the bullet by wrapping it in tissue paper before placing it in a pillbox or an envelope for shipment to the crime laboratory. Tool marks. A tool mark is any impression, gut, gouge, or abrasion caused by a tool coming into contact with another object. Examining the impression can, be, can reveal important class characteristics, such as the size and shape of the tool, but it is the impression is the presence of a minute imperfections on a tool that imparts individuality to that tool. The shape and pattern of such impressions are further modified by damage and wear during the tool's life. Here an example of a comparison of a tool mark with a suspect screwdriver. Note that the presence of nicks and breaks on the tool's edge helps individualize the tool to the mark. The comparison microscope is used to compare crime scene tool marks with tool impressions made by the suspect tool. When practical, the entire object or part of the object bearing the tool mark should be submitted to the crime laboratory for examination. Under no circumstances must the crime scene investigator attempt to fit the suspect tool into the tool mark. Any contact the tool and marked surface make may alter the mark and will, at the least, raise serious concerns about the integrity of the evidence. Other impressions. Impressions of other kinds, such as shoe, tire, or fabric impressions, may be important evidence as well. Before any impression is moved or otherwise handled, 
it must be photographed, including a scale, to show all the observable details of the impression. If the impression is on a readily recoverable item, such as glass, paper, or floor tile, transport the evidence to the laboratory intact. If the surface cannot be submitted to the laboratory, the investigator may be able to preserve the print in a manner similar to lifting a fingerprint. Other impressions, while shoe and tire marks are present at a crime scene, their preservation is best accomplished by photography and casting in areas where a bloody footwear impression is very faint or where the subject has tracked through blood, leaving a trail of bloody impressions. Chemical, chemical enhancements can visualize latent or nearly invisible blood impressions. Points of comparison. A sufficient number of points of comparison or the uniqueness of such points will support a finding that both the questioned and test impressions originated from one and only one source. Lastly, computer software and websites may be able to assist in making shoe print and tire impression comparisons. Also, bite mark impressions on skin and foodstuffs have proven to be important evidence in a number of homicide and rape cases. In any case, right around the 17 minute mark, minute mark that concludes chapter 9 on firearms. Pleasure to have you all. Looking forward to the next video. Subscriptions and likes are not necessary, but appreciated. And again, peace.